Yes, a very good afternoon, Jit. Welcome to the class. I will be sharing with you the content right now. So hereby, I am sharing the screen. Uh, Jit, you will be confirming me, okay? Whether you can see the screen or not. Is the screen visible to you, Jit? Can you see yes, the screen? Sir. Okay, fine. So hereby now I am uh, presenting with you uh, the content that I will be discussing. Yes, the content is visible to you, Jit. Can you see the content? Landscape of the soul. Is it visible? Okay. So let me discuss this one. Uh, will I increase the font size or is it visible to you properly? Jit, can you see it properly? Is it visible to you? Yes, sir, visible. Okay, fine. So let us move on then. See, it is written landscape of the soul. So let us come to the intro part first because this is a revision class. So basically, I will be revising uh, the chapter. I will try my level best to revise both the parts. But let's see whether I can. Okay. So it is written by uh, Natale Toferoy. And the chapter consisted of two parts. Okay. The first part is taken from the book this is the name of the book okay and here i uh, actually highlight this the name of the book is landscape of the soul ethics and spirituality in chinese painting i guess there is someone on the line so let me allow yes i think shivanjan joined us right now shivanjan a uh, very good afternoon and i have uh, yes good afternoon i think i have given the meeting id both in yes, the sir. google classroom as well as in the whatsapp group okay now uh, the important thing is that again i am moving on so this is the name of the book from where it has been taken that is landscape of the soul ethics and spirituality in chinese painting okay now obviously it deals with the art of painting basically this chapter deals with the art of painting and obviously uh, comparison is there compare and contrast is there between the chinese art form and the european art form we find there is a contrast between these two art forms okay and the writer here presents two anecdotes okay two references or rather to say two stories one related with uh, two stories related with chinese art and one story related with the european art okay just wait i guess there is someone on the line okay yes good afternoon raj welcome to the class good afternoon yes so let us move on so two stories are being referred related with the chinese art and one story is related with the european art okay something that we should all know about and obviously uh, the two schools of painting the chinese school of painting and the european school of painting both are compared and contrasted now when we deal with the european form of painting the europeans want a perfect likeness every time okay they want to achieve that illusionistic realism they wanted to make their uh, picture or portrait very much lifelike and real okay but when we consider the chinese painting that means uh, when we consider the paintings from asia uh, it is it gives more emphasis on the essence of life and spirit that is something very important and remember chinese art requires the active participation of the viewer both physically and mentally yes because chinese uh, uh, art uh, in order to appreciate chinese art as i repeated earlier remember active participation of the viewer is required okay both from the physical as well as from the mental perspective okay and remember the first part okay because this uh, particular chapter is divided into two parts uh, first of all obviously we will get to know about the chinese form of painting and the european form of painting and apart from that the second part of the chapter deals with 
uh, outsider art there we will get to know about nek chand because he was one of the most popular person in our country who popularized the concept of outsider art so if uh, uh, it is possible i will be discussing that one also uh, today itself so and the first part is related with the uh, first of all it is related with some important anecdotes then obviously uh, there is a comparison between the chinese form of painting and the european form of painting and then obviously the uh, concept the philosophical doctrines of dualism uh, that is called san shui is reflected in the chinese painting okay that is also there that i will be discussing okay fine so what are the characters we find at the very beginning we find three major characters now out of these three major characters two are very famous legendary painters the third important character i mean is a, is an emperor he is not a painter at all so wu daozi first of all we have to read about him and you all know about him precisely he was a a very famous okay 8th century chinese landscape painter who disappeared on inside his last painting remember he was the one who mysteriously disappeared inside his last painting okay then obviously there is the emperor wang zong okay he was the one who commissioned wu daozi to paint okay and he was the one who admired wu daozi's painting but remember one thing he was not an active participant in it he was actually not an active participant in it okay now quentin metsias remember he was a belgian blacksmith but later he became a very very famous painter and uh, since the author was also from belgium okay natali toveroy he was also from belgium so this is something that is related with his hometown and the story of quentin is very interesting i guess by this time you all are very familiar with the story of quentin met size okay and see now the explanation part i will be dealing see a 15th century belgian blacksmith who changed his profession to become a delicate realist painter and married the woman he loved and obviously he married the woman he loved okay explanation now let us come to the explanation anecdote about chinese painter wu daozi now let us read something with the help of some value points related with wu daozi okay any doubt up to this any questions in your mind shivanjan jit raj any sort of doubt or shall i move on to the anecdote okay in the explanation part related with the chinese painter wu daozi so any doubt up to this jit shivanjan raj is there any doubt or up to this it is clear to all of you it is clear shall i move on then yes kindly interact and let me know yes sir okay it is clear yes. up to this okay yep. fine okay so i am moving on so uh, what who was wu daozi wu daozi was a very famous chinese painter and remember he was commissioned by the chinese emperor wang zong to paint a landscape a beautiful landscape on a palace wall now when the painting was ready the emperor was invited to appreciate it and the emperor was spellbound by looking at the beautiful scene landscape sceneries everything he could recognized and the artistic brilliance uh, i mean was so much exposed that the emperor was very very happy mesmerized uh, he was uh, very impressed with the work of art and he, and he recognized many things by looking closely at the painting he recognized the forest the high mountains the waterfalls clouds men on hilly paths birds in flight and a cave situated at the foot of a mountain where a spirit resided that is actually wu daozi uh, made the emperor uh, see a cave the cave was at the foot of a mountain 
where a spirit actually resided and he clapped his hands and as you know the the door of the walls of the cave opened and Wu Daozi entered inside and before Wang Zhong could actually predict what is going to happen the painting as well as the painter both vanished okay see as the painting painter was showing the painting to the admiring emperor he offered to show the emperor uh, the way to the splendid interior of the cave he clapped his hands and the entrance to the cave opened this is something very important he clapped his hands and the entrance to the cave opened the painter got in but the entrance closed behind him and both the painting as well as the painter vanished now before Wang Zhong could follow his master painter by the name of Wu Daozi the painting as well as the painter both vanished okay and after that time Wu Daozi was never seen again this is something very important after that incident Wu Daozi was never ever seen again now there is another story that is related with an anonymous Chinese painter who had drawn the entire dragon but haven't drawn the eye of a dragon okay now the important thing was that he was very frightened okay because the dragon that he had drawn it had a, a likeness it has similarity or rather to say it has frightening likeness with that of an actual dragon okay and he feared it would fly out of the painting and he had a fear at the back of his mind that it might fly out of the painting and that was the reason that was the only reason that he had uh, he haven't drawn the eye of the dragon okay now l l next important point is meaning of the tales now obviously these are the anecdotes and remember these anecdotes plays a very important role in China's classical education traditional education the students even now also the students who are into art and culture and all this they study they study the lives and times of Wu Daozi even the several references related with his life and all this because the remember one thing Chinese painting basically uh, the heart and soul or the core Chinese painting is based on the philosophy of Duism and dear students what is Duao? Duao actually means it's a Chinese term Duao means path or way okay the way into the mystery of the universe okay the emperor may rule over territories but the artist alone knows the way within now obviously Wang Zhong uh, let us assume that he was a very powerful emperor okay but it was Wu Daozi who had the actual involvement with the work okay he knows the way within and that was the reason he entered inside his own painting and never ever was he seen again neither he was seen nor his painting was been seen and remember the emperor initially was so impressed with the beauty that he went on recognizing many aspects of nature and natural things that he found uh, painted in that landscape but when he saw the interior of the cave designing the cave paint interior of the cave design he was uh, I mean uh, I mean totally awestruck he was far more impressed but when he was on the verge of entering and following Wu Daozi because obviously Wu Daozi told him to follow him okay but when he was on the verge of following Wu Daozi uh, the doors of the cave closed and before he could realize before he means before the uh, Chinese Emperor Wang Zhong could realize that what actually happened the painting and the painter both vanished okay now another important thing is that only the master this is a very very important line and remember Chinese painting is related with spiritualism it is something that is very very spiritual okay and also philosophical and at the same time 
it it cross it crosses the material aspect of human existence i repeat chinese painting crosses the material existence of a uh, material sphere of human existence i guess there is someone on the line let us admit him yes good afternoon abhishek welcome to the yeah. live class yes good afternoon so abhishek is the screen visible to you okay fine so let us move on then so as i told you uh, udauzi attained that highest level of spirituality in terms of painting and see and, and that is the reason he he went a notch higher from the core existence of human beings and he 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 went beyond why i say only the core existence he went beyond any material appearance okay and uh, uh, one important thing i like to say in this regard that life has no meaning unless we undertake the inner spiritual journey this is something very important unless we undertake the inner spiritual journey life has practically no meaning and remember as i told you even now also the stories related with u daozi wang zong and other important references and anecdotes these things are seen in china's traditional education okay that means in china's classical education these things are seen not only did they help the master to guide his disciple in the right direction but they also revealed the spirit in which art was considered it was through such stories that great masters made abstract con concepts concrete this is something very important that with the help of these stories the abstract concepts were made concrete and these stories ultimately uh, gives uh, enough guidance to the trainees to the disciples to move in the right direction and it makes them realize that in which spirit art should be considered okay it makes them realize that in which spirit art should be actually considered and what was the anecdote related with the uh, european painter or rather to say the belgian painter quinten messiers remember he belongs to the uh, country belgium and obviously natale toveroy the author she also belongs to belgium okay and uh, uh, the important information that we find regarding uh, i mean quinten uh, that he, he had fallen in love with a painter's daughter whose father would not accept him as his son in law due to his profession why because by profession what was quinten by profession he was a blacksmith okay but uh, painting was something that was very much innate in him that was very much natural in him okay quinten secretly entered the painter studio and painted such a realistic fly on the panel that the painter tried to swat it away what is the meaning of swat dear students i guess you know the meaning of swat swat means to drive it away so the important thing is that uh, i mean the, the i mean the father the girl's father wanted to drive it away okay but ultimately uh, what exactly uh, he realized it after some time that it was not a real fly it was a realistic fly we can say see it is written realistic fly a fly that is very much real so there there lies the concept of illusionistic likeness and he can be said to be the pioneer i guess you you heard about the term pioneer dear students have you heard about the term pioneer shivanjan jit uh, have you heard about the term pioneer pioneer means he Uh, he was the main one he was the you can say the main leader he was the one who actually created the concept okay he was the pioneer we say he is the pioneer in the field of learning and art it is like that so in the field of illusionistic likeness in the field of realism quinten metsaes can be said to be the pioneer okay now what is the comparison that we can find in case of european and chinese art what sort of a comparison we find okay the author draws a comparison 
between Chinese and European styles of painting. Okay. The European painter wants us to look at a particular landscape. Okay, because a European painter will actually take you along with him or her, will actually guide you regarding his painting, will give you in inputs related with his painting, will select for you a specific angle. Okay, from where, from which place or from which that particular place only you can visualize the painting and all this. Okay, that means uh, you have to follow the European painter and you have to follow whatever he is saying related with his painting. Okay, but the Chinese painter uh, is something different. He does not choose a single viewpoint. You can analyze, you can appreciate, you can interpret the painting from any viewpoint you choose. Okay. Okay, but the European painter wants you to borrow his eyes. Okay, borrow his eyes means to follow him. Literally speaking, to follow him. But the Chinese painter, on the other hand, does not choose a single viewpoint. His landscape is not a real one, remember. And one can enter it from any point and travel in it in a very leisurely movement. You can enter it from any point. And of course you can travel in it in a very leisurely movement. Okay. This is like in the case of the horizontal scroll. Now you can do a bit of horizontal scroll also whenever you are appreciating a Chinese painting because one section will open up a new mystery for you and then it will help you to open up another section and in this way from one segment or one section you can move on to the next segment and the next section okay and what ultimately it does it adds a dimension of time to it it also involves an active physical as well as mental participation of the viewer yes the participation is both physical as well as mental that means active participation on the part of the viewer is required without active participation on the part of the viewer it is very difficult to appreciate a chinese uh, painting okay so you have to actively involved in it and most importantly in order to know a chinese painting first of all you have to understand the chinese painter you have to enter inside his mind then only you you will be able to understand the painting okay or the chinese painting the chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes what he wants he wants something else what he wants he wants you to enter his mind just now dear students i told you about this line I repeat one more time, the Chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes. What he wants? He wants you to enter his mind. The Chinese landscape is a spiritual and conceptual space, remember. Okay, in Asia the stress, the emphasis, actually dear students you should know what is the meaning of stress. You should know it very well. The meaning of stress is uh, obviously to give emphasis. That is the meaning of stress. Okay. In Asia, the stress is on the essence of inner life and spirit. Obviously, a Chinese painting is more into spiritual. Chinese painting is more philosophical. Chinese painting requires an active participation, both mental as well as physical. Chinese painting sometimes crosses the boundaries of time and space. Okay, uh, this is something very important. And obviously, Wu Daozi, being a Chinese painter, he attained he attained successfully that highest level of spiritual excellence in terms of his art and painting that is beyond the material existence of human beings, and that is the reason. That is the reason Wu Daozi uh, moved to that highest level, highest zone of artistic credibility and creativity. Okay, remember, he reached to that highest zone of artistic credibility and creativity. This is something very important. And finally, what exactly happened? He, along with his painting, both vanished. Okay, now, 
what is the concept of dualism and the chinese philosophy of sanshui now obviously according to dualism the universe is consisted of two complementary poles any idea shivanjan or jit any idea abhishek what can be the you can guess there is no harm no problem i can correct you but at least you interact and say what is the meaning of complementary can any one of you suggest because so giving a good response yes the so giving a good response uh giving a good response no it is not getting any meaning regarding that yes shivanjan or jit any idea or uh, regarding complementary poles what does complementary poles signify yes please complementary poles okay what does this complementary pole signify any idea complementary because they are complementing each other exactly contrast to one another okay because both are opposite in their nature both are opposite in their characteristic traits okay in feminine and yang something that is masculine and there is the interaction of these two energies remember the interaction of these two energies makes the universe okay and ultimately their interaction takes place in the middle void region now most of us we don't uh, give a uh, great importance to the middle void region we don't give so much of importance to the middle void region but we should remember unless uh, the middle void is there without the middle void there is no interaction or no interaction is hardly possible between the yin and the yang okay no interaction is possible between the yin and the yang so what is required the the required is middle void okay because middle void is the position or the place where the interaction between the yin and the yang takes place and remember if you consider the middle void or if you try to analyze the concept of middle void from the chinese uh, landscape painting point of view then i should say the white unpainted part of the chinese landscape i repeat the what uh, the white unpainted part of the chinese landscape is actually the middle void okay see their meeting point meeting point of what in and yang they are totally complementing one another they are totally contrasting to one another in is the feminine aspect of universal energy yang is the masculine aspect of universal energy and their interaction is only possible dear students their interaction is only possible with the help of the middle void okay now let us move on and uh, another thing i like to say that the mechanism of the middle void has some bit of similarity with the yogic practice of pranayam and what is the mechanism of pranayam breathe in retain the breath and breathe out okay retain part is the middle void okay remember where interaction occurs this void is essential nothing can happen without it yes without the middle void nothing can happen so the entire concept of the interaction of yin and yang that is the entire concept of the chinese painting everything rest upon the mechanism of the middle void because it is the middle void region where the meditation actually occurs remember so void is essential i underline or rather to say hi highlight this portion i guess you can all see the highlighted portion this void is essential because dear students nothing can happen okay nothing can happen without it without the uh, presence of the middle void nothing can happen in dualism our landscape is called san shui shan means mountain shui means water however it doesn't represent a real landscape okay remember it is the dualist view of the universe now this dualist view or dualism came from wu dao's name and to understand chinese painting we should thoroughly understand what dualism is all about and obviously san shui it is a combination of two terms mountain and water 
so the mountains and water in the chinese painting are representative of sanshui and the white unpainted space is representative of the middle void remember the white unpainted space in the chinese landscape is actually the middle void where the interaction between yin and yang takes place remember and uh, both are opposite to one another okay see if you see yin is the feminine aspect of universal energy and yang is the masculine aspect of universal energy and remember this so mountain and water in the chinese painting they are the representative of sanshui and the white unpainted space uh, is the representative of the middle void and remember uh, it is in the middle void where the interaction between the yin and the yang takes place i repeat the interaction between the yin and the yang takes place in the middle void region without the middle void remember dear students interaction between the yin and the yang is not at all possible and if you consider this interaction from a bigger perspective taking earth and heaven into due consideration then obviously man acts as the medium of communication it acts as the middle void okay between the heaven and the earth see this line or rather to say see this point very uh, carefully man is the medium of communication between the two complementary poles of the universe and obviously we can see his presence is obviously there his presence is very much visible in case of the chinese paintings okay so the concept of art brute that i will be discussing in one of my other classes and obviously in the google form i am sharing the link and everything it has been shared already in the google classroom but for your convenience i will be sharing it in the whatsapp group so that you all can solve it and i i am i am very hopeful that the rest of you why only one or two the rest of you should all solve okay because this will be a self evaluation and at the same time it will boost up your confidence okay because mcq type questions will come in your upcoming examination right so it will boost up your confidence so on why only one or two you will solve the rest of the uh, students from this section also will solve so you should uh, everyone should solve it you should remind your friends also uh from your class that you everyone should solve it okay 15 mcq questions i have given from landscape of the soul okay so i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you understood whatever been discussed by me is there any doubt you want to share any views any doubt or is it clear to all of you shivanjan ji okay, it is clear okay fine so i leave you all uh, see you again in my next class thank you and have a nice day thank you thank you everyone Thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you.